Hey guys, uh, today we're gonna do a short movie uh, about um, replacing the thermal paste and the thermal pads under the CPU and the graphic card uh, in an Asus uh, laptop. It's an Asus uh, ROG, the model number is uh, GU501G. Uh, now the customer brought it in uh, saying that at uh, certain times uh, it, it gets uh, the temperature gets to around 80 degrees 80 90 degrees Celsius which is very high uh, for the CPU uh, under heavy stress uh, so uh, changing the thermal paste might help even though this is a fairly new computer it's pretty much uh, maybe less than a year old and uh, for a one year old uh, computer this should not be a problem. I typically recommend changing the thermal pads and thermal paste uh, somewhere around the uh, two to and a half year mark. Uh, if you have a gaming computer and you're uh, stressing it, if you're using it every day uh, for a extended period of time, <coughs> where uh, the computer will generate uh, a lot of heat, uh, the, the thermal paste will uh, solidify, um, and then you will become brittle. You will not uh, transfer heat uh, properly. Now let's see where this one, I'm, I'm running a basic uh, test on it uh, where I'm stressing uh, actually the CPU uh, and I'm stressing the memory and uh, the computer actually seems, the temperature seem pretty much within, uh, within the normal limits. I'm going to show you uh, what I'm talking about. So as you see right there, uh, the temperatures oscillate between uh, 49 to 55 uh, degrees uh, on the CPU. That's the um, uh, that's the one which I'm uh, more concerned because the graphic card can take a lot a lot more uh, heat uh, than uh, than the CPU. And uh, yeah, so the temperatures, as you see right here, the highest it got to around uh, 61 degrees uh, Celsius. That is 64 on one core, uh, but that's uh, still within the normal uh, limits. Now let's see. Uh, let's see what uh, actually changing the um, uh, changing the thermal paste and the thermal pads. Uh, how much of a difference uh, it will make? So we're gonna shut down the, the computer, and uh, let's see. I'm gonna show you how to open it up. Okay. So again, this is. Uh, this is the computer I was talking about, the ROG. Uh, okay, and the way you open uh, this particular computer is fairly easy. Uh, you'll have, uh, okay, let me move the camera in a better angle. Okay. okay. So you have, uh, you have a bunch of screws on the back of the of the computer let's find the right okay the right tip so uh, in order to open this one you'll need a t5 uh, screwdriver and we'll get to open all the screws and, uh, now uh, you'll probably notice uh, that there are two different type of uh, screws uh, inside uh, size-wise, uh, the ones which are on the inside here, so basically these three ones, one, two, three, are longer than the ones which are on the actual uh, the edges of the computer, so try not to mix them. You have one, two, three which are bigger uh, and the rest of them are the same size. Okay. Okay, so this is one of the computers which uh, opening it up it's uh, fairly easy compared to other uh, gaming computers uh, because those they some of them are in pass I mean are very very hard to open now uh, once you removed all the screws you'll take a pry tool and you'll slide it right here in between you see there is a little bit of a gap right there uh, so you'll slide it in and then you'll you lift it upwards okay just like this and this is what happens you will actually be able to lift the top case of something it's holding it in here and let's find out what it is okay okay that's 
something holding it in the back. Let's see. Okay. Okay. So in the back, uh, there is that little edge. So let's see if you can see it right here. Where you want to put uh, the pry tool and just release the clips. That's what's holding it in the back. Okay. And let's see. Now, this will expose the internals of the computer. Now, if you choose to do this, um, you might also want to clean up the computer. And I'm, I'm going to show you why this customer had um, issues with overheating. Because look at how the, fan, the fans are looking like. They're completely clogged with dust. The fur, both of the fans. So obviously they cannot move a lot of air. Uh, now, in order to clean up uh, the fans, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, you can use a, a can of uh, air spray and blow the dust out of it. Or you could, uh, that's one option. Option number two is to physically uh, take off the fan and clean it up with a little uh, brush. Uh, that would be option number two. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm actually gonna use a, a high pressure um, uh, blower to, to clean it up. So in order to do that, on, let me just plug this guy in. Um, I'm gonna put the video on pause because there's no need uh, for you. To hear that I'm gonna clean up the fence and then I'm gonna show you how to disassemble uh, the heatsink okay so I'll be right with you okay so I'm back uh, now you see the difference uh, I remember how the fans were and you see how <coughs> I'm sorry how uh, they are right now so um, having the fans clogged up with dust uh, they might have contributed at all building uh, of the heat uh, under here so um, yeah, we're, we're gonna let's uh, let's remove the the heat sink and uh, get to replace the thermal paste. Now the first thing we want to do is remove the battery. As I'm always saying in all the repairs, make sure you remove the battery. Now the battery in this computer it is right here. It's on the on this side. Uh, in order to remove it, you have this uh, metal clip. You want to push it backwards and then you will lift on the battery content very easy now it is safe to actually get to remove anything from it you're gonna need a phillips uh, screwdriver we will uh, disconnect uh, the um, the fans so you have one cable right here and you have another cable right there which is uh, is, is the context of the fan we're gonna slide them out okay now the fans are removed and we're gonna have a couple screws Phillips screw, screws one here two right there we're gonna start with the sides okay and I'll show you there there is a little bit more difficult to remove this heatsink uh, than in other computers and I'm gonna show you very soon why we're gonna remove these four screws okay let's see oh, they're very tight in there uh, so there are the four screws which are holding the CPU heatsink okay and the one right there we just voided the warranty okay and we have the graphics card screws right there now you hear a little uh, crack uh, or snap when I'm opening the screws you don't have to over tie them uh, what you're hearing it's actually uh, the uh, thread locker uh, there's the little uh, blue paint which is on the side of uh, all the screws and they make uh, the screws actually uh, stay into place 
Now, uh, at this point, in most of the computers, I will be, I would be able to actually lift the heatsink. Uh, that's not the case with this one. Okay, because as you see, it's still moving. So we have to jiggle it up and down. Okay, to give it a little bit of a play. Okay, and we have here some. Uh, some tape we have to remove the tape uh, you can break it because it's not gonna uh, be too adhesive uh, you will have to replace it after that okay or just go slowly okay oh, it ripped so no problem we're gonna have it uh, replaced if you don't have uh, any other kind of tape you can use uh, electrical tape uh, that is absolutely fine uh, as it withstands uh, high temperatures okay so we, ha we have removed that tape we're gonna do the same on the right hand side and now after you remove the tape, don't rush into lifting the heatsink. Why? Because you see you have a couple cables going on top of the heatsink, so you'll have to remove that. So we're gonna remove uh, on the right hand side, there is also another black tape, which is holding the Wi-Fi cables snug. So we're gonna remove the Wi-Fi cables. Please, I'm mentioning in all the other videos, do not hold onto the don't pull on the cable itself but rather on the metallic part okay you don't want to break the antenna cables we're gonna put it on the side and on the other side we have the LCD so we're gonna remove uh, we're gonna remove the, the cable the, there is a little bit of a tape here you want to lift it up okay and now push the cable from the sides push it outwards okay slowly don't force it okay the LCD cable it's removed we're gonna put it backwards and now it is safe to actually lift the heatsink and that's what's underneath okay okay you see this is the thermal paste and this is hardened it is a little bit hardened. We're gonna clean it up. Uh, I use a little uh, plastic uh, plastic tool to actually scrape it off there. We're gonna do that for both the CPU and the graphic card, and then use a little. Uh, once you once you have it removed, uh, use a brush, uh, or you can use uh, a napkin. Uh, to clean uh, the excess uh, thermal paste okay if the thermal paste is very um, very brittle you might have to use the scraper a little bit harder so you see uh, the thermal paste is removed now we're gonna remove the thermal paste from the top of the CPU and of the graphics card okay you wanna go slowly here so you don't knock uh, any components of the CPU or graphic card okay you can try uh, you can use just a, a toothbrush uh, that will kind of do the job you go in circular motions don't put uh, too much pressure and there you go you have it cleaned now we go to the uh, okay we go to the graphics card we're gonna take the excess using a plastic tool uh, I recommend you to go here directly with the toothbrush or whatever brush you might have as there are a bunch of caps uh, next to the CPU which you might very easily damage okay so okay so that's removed okay now if you want to do it everything like by the book uh, you might also want to take a little bit of a napkin put some uh, alcohol on it 
I'm using as always uh, denaturated alcohol. Uh, it is one of the best alcohols for electronics. Uh, okay, we put a little bit of alcohol on it. And we're just gonna go onto the die of the graphic card and of the CPU. And we can repeat the same procedure here. And now I'll have to put the video on pause because I have to take this call. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. <laughs> now, uh, once we have that uh, thermal paste uh, out of the CPU uh, and the heatsink, we're gonna move to the next step. Uh, as you see here, there is a little bit of a thermal paste pad. It's a very uh, weird uh, combination which goes onto these components. I would not worry too much about that as yes, they do generate uh, heat. However, uh, where you want to change the thermal pads are actually onto the memory chips which are located under this heatsink. Now, how you get off this heatsink? That's your, um, uh, that's your graphic card and this is the video RAM. Uh, you see this is all heatsink. So you have another two screws. One here, actually one screw on onto here. But this doesn't lift and the reason why it doesn't lift is because you see you have the hinge which is actually uh, put on top of that heatsink so that's why i said this is a little bit more complicated than other computers to remove to fully remove um, the the heatsink from uh, both cpu and gpu so we're going to remove the hinge screws there are five of them and we're going to try to lift the hinge up Okay, just like this. Okay, now the hinge removed. Now we can remove the heatsink on top of the video RAM. Okay, and ta there you have it. Okay, uh, this one doesn't have all the uh, video RAM chips, it has only six of them. And this is your thermal pads I guess uh, you know uh, they're they're very uh, odd looking uh, we're gonna have them cleaned and we're gonna reapply a new uh, thermal pads now uh, those you can buy uh, there are different type uh, of thermal pads this one if I'm looking correctly they look like uh, 0 0.5 uh, millimeters um, you can you can purchase them uh, online or you can buy um, you can buy your own um, uh, a block of a thermal paste, a thermal pad, and then just have it uh, cut to your desired uh, thickness if you want to do that. Now, what we do first? It's clean, clean the old, old one. Okay. Please don't use metal tools around this area. Okay. Scrape it just like so. Okay, doesn't have to be perfect. Now we'll take the napkin with the alcohol and just clean, clean the surface of the chip and get it ready for the for the new thermal pad okay as you see they're nice and clean they are a little bit oily it is absolutely normal because the thermal pads they have uh, some sort of solution which is a little bit oily and which keeps it um, uh, it keeps it uh, conductive. Now this is the type of thermal pads I'm going to use, which I have to uh, cut it to size. Uh, that is a 0.5 millimeter. Uh, I'm going to cut it and I'm going to start the video after the thermal pad is fully cut. And I'll show you how it looks and we're going to reapply the thermal, um, we're going to reapply the heat sink. Okay, so the new thermal uh, pads are in place. Uh, word of advice, um, 
even if let's say if you don't find the 0.5 millimeter you can put uh, one millimeter thick because the heat sink will just press it against the chips so it will give you a nice uh, nice tight um, uh, conductive uh, uh, layer uh, right there um, now what I want to say um, I've I've saw it in the past when people were actually trying to do this by themselves and what did they think oh let me put a thermal pad and also do thermal paste uh, because it's gonna be more conductive no never never combine the thermal pads with the thermal paste it's a very very bad idea uh, will make your computer greatly overheat okay so now we can put this uh, heat sink back so well okay always try to jiggle it a little bit so okay just like this perfect uh i'm gonna put the screws the screws of the um, of the hinge slowly push the hinge down make sure it's properly aligned with the holes oh. Okay, and we're gonna do the five screws. gonna take I typically use uh, Arctic uh, MX4 or Prolimatech uh, thermal paste not all uh, thermal paste it's uh, created equal um, for this uh, particular application I'm going to use the, um, I'm gonna use the uh, Arctic silver MX4 um, and okay let's apply it on top of the GPU first very little, you don't have to uh, go crazy on the amount of thermal paste because when you put the heat, the heat sink on top of it, it will spread it around. So, putting extra is not a good idea. Okay, now we're gonna take the heat sink and okay. make sure the cables are out of the way. And we'll put it down like this. Okay, we take the cables out of the way, including the cables for the motor, for the fan. And we're just gonna move it just like this. Make sure the thermal paste is nice and spread. And now we're going to uh, put back the screws. The order is not very important, but uh, if you want, you can follow most of the heat sinks. They will have uh, they will have it numbered the the order of the screws. Okay, and now on top of the graphics card, pretty much go opposite corners as the best practice perfect now we're gonna reconnect the cables we're gonna start with lcd cable or start with whatever one you want i'm gonna do lcd slowly push it in okay then we're gonna do the fan and we go to the next fan and you have to excuse me for one and now we're gonna put back the wi-fi cables Ok, 
okay now if you want you can reuse this tape which will go to kind of seal the airflow on the CPU and heat seal. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, fan and heat seal. Uh, you can make your own. You can use um, you can use an electrical tape, which will work just as well. Or what I typically use, I use uh, this uh, silver tape, uh, which is highly conductive, and uh, actually it's gonna transfer heat uh, very well. It's, it's not only gonna seal. Uh, properly but also it's uh, it's actually uh, transferring heat from the heat sink to the body of the fan which is obviously much cooler so okay let's, let's do this this tape you can uh, you can find it in uh, Home Depot it is uh, intended for uh, high heat uh, applications so it is perfect uh, for uh, for this particular uh, scenario it is highly adhesive and you will not just fall off uh, due to the heat okay and if anything it's just gonna improve the heat transfer between uh, as I was saying heat sink and uh, fan okay There you have it. This is how it will it will look. Just making sure it is nice and tight there. We're gonna do the same thing onto the right side. If you're picky about the way your computer looks on the inside, this might not be the best one for you because it's not black, it is silver, it is highly visible, however. I don't know how often you're actually going to open your computer, so that should not be an issue. Okay. And there you go, there you have it. And the last thing we're gonna sit up, we're gonna sit the battery connector. Okay, we're gonna push it down and then pull onto this metallic connector and the job is done now let's uh, let's close up the computer okay I'm gonna press it just like this and uh, we're gonna do also a quick test I'm gonna put uh, some of the screws not all of them because uh, I want to show you also uh, the difference it made so I'm gonna launch. Uh, okay, I'm gonna launch my software. Turn on the computer and see if there are actually. Well, there should be a difference in the temperatures of the computer. Okay, so. Okay, I have to hook it up to the charger so bear with me for a second okay, waiting for it to load and there you go yeah just for privacy purpose okay so Now let's see, okay. That's an application which actually gives you a very good idea about the temperatures in your computer. So, you know. Now let's see. Let's see what we're dealing with. So as you see on the battery power, which is how I tested it uh, last time, the temperatures are a little bit lower at around 51 to 53 degrees, which 
is around 8 to 10 degrees cooler than uh, what it was before so that shows me that actually uh, this helped a little bit not much but uh, it did make it did make a difference um, if you're having problems with the computer overheating on you especially this uh, particular asus or any other gaming uh, gaming computers um, changing the thermal paste and thermal pads might actually help you as well and yeah, if, uh, if this video helped you in any way uh, please uh, like uh, leave a comment um, and uh, why not subscribe to my channel where I'm trying to um, do as many videos as possible uh, various videos uh, showing uh, different type of repairs repairs which can be attempted uh, by you without any uh, without having any uh, particularly uh, uh, developed uh, technical skills and you won't need uh, that many tools, uh, basic tools. Uh, so once again, until next time, uh, take care of yourself and uh, leave a comment. Thank you.